Hi friends, welcome to the Smart Crack series for NEET 2022. So in this series, what we do is we pick an important topic from each chapter of your NCERT physics book. We understand that topic in brief and then we solve some repeated questions. The questions which are often repeated in the NEET exam and they are based upon that topic. So let's begin. Our today's topic is dimensional analysis. So we know in physics, there are seven fundamental quantities. What are fundamental quantities? The quantities for which we fix the units based upon measurements. And then we use those units to determine units of all other physical quantities, which we call derived quantities. All right. So there are seven fundamental quantities, length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, luminous intensity, and amount of substance. Their units are meter for length, then kilogram for mass, second for time, then Kelvin for temperature, ampere for the electric current, candela for luminous intensity, and mole for the amount of substance. All right. Now, the derived quantities are based upon the fundamental quantities and the relation which relates them the derived and fundamental quantities is known as dimensions okay dimensions of the derived quantities so for an example let's consider this quantity speed so we know what is speed speed is distance covered divided by time taken okay so what is distance distance is length and time is time so Dimensions of speed, we put dimensions in that small box. So dimensions of speed are what? So in numerator, we have distance, which is length. So we can write L or we can write L to the power 1. Okay. If it is distance square, we will write L to the power 2. If it is distance cube, we will write L to the power 3 and so on. So it is L raised to 1 divided by time in denominator. So it is T raised to 1 in denominator. If we take this t raised to 1 in numerator, we will get what? L raised to 1, t raised to minus 1. So these are dimensions of the speed. Okay. After that, similarly, we can find out dimensions of other physical quantities like acceleration. So we know what is acceleration. It is change in speed, final speed minus initial speed divided by time. Okay. So what are dimensions of acceleration? So they are equal to we have speed in numerator so what are dimensions of speed okay dimensions of v are l raised to 1 t raised to minus 1 dimensions of u are also what l raised to 1 t raised to minus 1 so when we subtract those two the dimensions of the sub, uh, subtraction okay the resultant of the subtraction are also the same as that of v and u all right so the dimensions of numerator are l raised to 1 t raised to minus 1 and dimensions of denominator are what t raised to 1 if we take this in numerator we'll get l raised to 1 t raised to minus okay after that we need to know dimensions of two more quantities one is force and we know what is force so force is equal to mass into acceleration from Newton's second law. So dimensions of force are dimensions of mass multiplied by dimensions of acceleration. So dimensions of acceleration now we know they are L raised to 1, T raised to minus 2. Okay. And what are dimensions of mass? Mass is again a fundamental quantity. So its dimensions are M raised to 1. Okay. So, dimensions of force are m1, l1, t raised to minus 2. And our next quantity, so which is the last quantity, it is work or energy. Okay, both have same dimensions. If you remember the law of conservation of energy, energy can be converted to work, work can be converted to energy. All right. So, work we know it is force into displacement this is one of the formula 
and therefore dimensions of work are equal to what dimensions of force multiplied by dimensions of displacement so displacement is length okay so dimensions of displacement are l raised to 1 so dimensions of work are l1 m1 t raised to minus 2 multiplied by l raised to 1 which we can write as l raised to 1 and we have in multiplication l raised to 1 that means it is l raised to 1 plus 1 so l raised to 2 m raised to 1 and t raised to minus 2 all right so these are dimensions of work so now we need to remember dimensions of these terms okay these quantities the velocity or speed acceleration then force and work and the relation between these terms okay these quantities and all other physical quantities so if we know that relation then we will be able to find out the dimensions of the required physical quantities all right so after that so this is how we find out dimensions now let's see what are uses of dimensions so let me add some pages one two three four five okay this many will be sufficient all right so first use is to check if a physical equation is correct or wrong so to check the correctness of an equation okay so for an example let's consider this equation v equals to u plus a times t okay this is first kinematic equation of motion for uniformly accelerated motion all right so in this equation i want to check whether it is correct or it is wrong so what will i do i will find out dimensions of all terms involved in the equation if they are equal they should be equal because dimensions mean what units so units of all terms should be equal otherwise we are comparing apples to bananas okay we are equating apples to bananas and that's not allowed so dimensions of v what are dimensions of v they are l1 t raised to minus 1 okay dimensions of u it's also speed so they are same dimensions of u are also l1 t raised to minus 1. after that what are dimensions of a into t so we memorized the dimensions of acceleration okay so dimensions of acceleration are l1 t raised to minus 2 and dimensions of this time are what t raised to 1 so we have t raised to minus 2 plus 1 that is t raised to minus 1 okay that means the dimensions of all terms are equal so this equation is dimensionally correct okay and why i am saying it is dimensionally correct because if you take let's say another equation v is equal to 4 times u plus 9 times a into t the dimensions of all terms involved in this equation will also match okay because 4 9 these are constants these are numbers they don't have dimensions okay so if the dimensions of the terms involved in the equation don't match the equation is definitely wrong but even if the dimensions of all terms involved in the equation match we can say that equation is only dimensionally correct and we can never know about this coefficients of the terms involved in the equation okay from dimensions all right so this is how we can check correctness of the equation and let's say v is equal to u plus ft if we take an equation like this so this equation is definitely wrong because if you find out dimensions of this last term what will happen so force is mass times acceleration so its dimensions are l1 m1 t raised to minus 2 and we have t time so its dimensions are t raised to 1 so what will be dimensions of this term 
So it will be L1 M1 and T raised to minus 2 plus 1 that is minus 1. Okay. And these dimensions don't match with the other terms. All right. And that's why we can say this equation is wrong. Okay. It cannot be a correct physical equation. So this is how we can figure out whether a given equation is correct, dimensionally correct or it is wrong. All right. So if dimensions don't match, then equation is definitely wrong. But if dimensions match, then equation is dimensionally correct. Then let's see next use. So next use is to find relation between the fundamental, sorry, the quantities. And for this, let us consider an example. So time period of the simple pendulum, it depends on length, okay, length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so example is time period of simple pendulum depends on length of the pendulum L and acceleration due to gravity. G. Okay. So we want to find out the relation among these quantities. So relate them. Let's say relate them. So what we'll do is we'll take time period of the pendulum. And we are given that it depends on what? It depends on length of the pendulum. But we don't know the power of length that would appear in the equation for the time period. So let's consider power of length is A. Okay, after that, it also depends on acceleration due to gravity. So let's take L raised to A multiplied by G raised to. Again, we don't know the power of G that will appear in the equation. So it is suppose G raised to B. And our job is to figure out what are the values of A and B using the dimensional analysis. Okay. So there will be some constant. If we remove the proportionality sign and put an equality sign, there will be some constant. So constant is K. So we have K times L raised to A, G raised to B. After that. So dimensions of T should be equal to what? K doesn't have any dimensions because it's a number. Okay. So dimensions of L raised to A multiplied by dimensions of acceleration due to gravity raised to B. And we have memorized the dimensions of acceleration. So dimensions of time is just T raised to 1. Dimensions of length are L raised to 1. And dimensions of acceleration due to gravity are L raised to 1 and T raised to minus 2. Okay. So on right hand side we have what? Okay. To to the power of this length, we had A and the power of acceleration due to gravity was B. So we have L raised to 1A. Okay, here we have L raised to 1A and here we have L raised to 1B. So what will be resultant power? It is L raised to A plus B. And what is power of T? So it is T raised to minus 2B. All right. So then on left hand side, we just have time. We don't have length. Okay. So that means A plus B must be equal to zero. Okay. So comparing the dimensions on left hand side and right hand side, what do we get? We get A plus B equals to zero. That's one relation. That is A equals to what? Minus B. And the power of T on both sides should be equal. So 1 should be equal to, this 1 should be equal to what? Minus 2B. So minus 2B equals to 1. That means B equals to, 
if we take that minus 2 on other side, minus 1 by 2. And if we substitute that over here, what do we get? We get a equals to a equals to 1 by 2. Okay, so I will just write it here. A equals to what? Minus of b, which is minus 1 by 2. So a equals to 1 by 2. Okay, and now we can substitute that in this relation here. So what do we get? We get t equals to k times l raised to 1 by 2 and t raised to minus 1 by, sorry, it is g raised to minus 1 by 2. And this can be written in more suggestive form or in a form which is good to memorize. So it is k times l raised to half can be written as square root of l. Okay. And the g raised to minus half can be taken in denominator which will become what? Square root of g in denominator. And combining that I can write it is k times square root of l upon g. And the correct formula is time period of the pendulum is 2 pi square root of l upon g. Okay. So we almost figure out, figured out that formula except for this multiplicative factor. Okay. Except for that 2 pi. All right. So this is how we can determine the dimensions or we can find out the relation between the quantities using dimensions. Okay. So this is all there in the theory of dimensional analysis. Now let's move on to the problem, need problems. So let's check this straightforward problem. Okay, dimensions of stress are, and it is from need 2020. So what are dimensions of stress? So to find out that we need to know what the formula for stress. So we know stress is equal to force divided by area and we know dimensions of force also which are L1, M1, T raised to minus 2 and dimensions of area. What is area? Area is, let's suppose area of a rectangle, it is length times breadth. Okay. So length is also length, breadth is also length and that's why dimensions of A are what? L raised to 1 into L raised to 1. So that is L raised to 1 plus 1. So it's L raised to 2. Okay. So in denominator we have L raised to 2. If we take that in the numerator, we get L raised to minus 2. So what are dimensions of stress? If we take this L raised to 2 in numerator, it becomes L raised to minus 2. So overall we have L raised to 1 minus 2. That is L raised to minus 1. Then we have m raised to 1, t raised to minus 2. So which of these options matches it? I guess it is option D. So option D is the correct answer. Okay, so simple. Then let's move on to next problem. The dimensions of this term. This is from NEET 2010. So dimensions of this term, half of epsilon naught e square, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and e is the electric field E. So if you remember the electrostatics, this term is energy density of an electric field. Okay. And what do I mean by energy density? So energy density is energy, okay, energy will denote by later capital U per unit volume, okay. So dimensions of energy, so energy density is equal to what half of epsilon naught e square, that means dimensions of half of epsilon naught e square are equal to what dimensions of energy density. So we know the dimensions of energy and we know the dimensions of Volume also, volume is what? Length into length into length. Okay, L cube. So we can find out dimensions of this term. So let's do that. It's very simple. So what are dimensions of energy? So dimensions of, let's say, uh, I will write. Okay, you don't have to write it like this in neat exam. Just 
finish it fast. So dimensions of this term are equal to what dimensions of u upon dimensions of v. This u is energy. Okay. So dimensions are m1 l2 t raised to minus 2 or l2 m1 t raised to minus 2 and dimensions of volume are l raised to 3. If we take this in numerator, it becomes L raised to minus 3. So again, we have L raised to 2 minus 3, which is L raised to minus 1. So the dimensions are M1, L raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. Okay, let's check. So it matches with option B, I guess. No, uh, yeah, it matches with option B. So option B is the answer. Then let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is the velocity v of a particle at time t is given by v equals to a t plus b divided by t plus c where a, b, t and c are constants. The dimensions of a, b and c are. So this is again very simple problem. So we know now that the dimensions of all terms in an equation should be equal. Okay. So dimensions of V must be equal to dimensions of this first term on right hand side AT plus uh, sorry it should be equal to dimensions of B divided by T plus C. Okay and then here we have B divided by T plus C. So we are adding these two terms T and C that means dimensions of C must be equal to dimensions of T. Okay so what are dimensions of C? This is very simple. Dimensions of C are t raised to 1. Okay, after that. So, dimensions of A t are equal to what? Dimensions of V. And if you remember the relation V is equal to u plus A t. Okay, in that relation, dimensions of V are equal to dimensions of A t. And what is A? It is acceleration. So, what are dimensions of acceleration? It is L1 t raised to minus 2. Okay. And then here we have dimensions of V equal to dimensions of this term B upon T plus C. So actually dimensions of this term in denominator are equal to dimensions of time. So we know speed is equal to what? Distance upon time. So here we have time in the denominator. That means dimensions of this term must be equal to what dimensions of distance that is length. Okay. So dimensions of B are equal to what L. So let's check in which option uh, these dimensions match. So is it or not D because dimensions of B don't match. Okay. So it must be option B. All right. So very simple. So let's move on to the next problem. Next problem is if force F, velocity V and time T are taken as fundamental units, then the dimensions of mass are. What are dimensions of mass in terms of these units? So again, it's simple, but it is somewhat lengthy because now we have to consider that this mass depends on some powers of these quantities, which we saw. Okay. So we solved a problem like this uh, some time back. So M is proportional to, let's consider it is F raised to A, V raised to B and T raised to C. So M equals to some number, some constant, okay, times F raised to A, V raised to B and T raised to C. And after that, what do we have to do? We have to take dimensions on both sides. So dimensions on left hand side are just m raised to 1. Okay, it is just mass on left hand side. Oh. Yeah, so it is m raised, <coughs> I'm sorry, it is m raised to 1. And it should be equal to, k doesn't have dimensions. So it is dimensions of force raised to a dimensions of speed raised to b times dimensions of time raised to c. So which is equal to, we know the formula for force, it is L1 m m1 
t raised to minus 2 we have its power a then v raised to b so it is l1 t raised to minus 1 raised to b and we have t raised to 1c or we can just write t raised to c okay and then now let's equate dimensions on left hand side and right hand side so what do we get so there is no length and no time on left hand side that means their powers must be equal to zero okay so on right hand side we have l raised to what 1a from this term 1b from the second term so we get a plus b equals to zero that is a is equal to minus b and then if we take power of m so it is m raised to 1 on left hand side and on right hand side it is m raised to 1a okay that is m raised to a so a should be equal to 1 comparing the powers of m okay that means b is equal to what it is minus 1 and then comparing the powers of time so we have t raised to minus 2a from this term minus b from this term and plus c from the last term so it is minus 2a minus b plus c equals to 0 so let's substitute values of a and b so it is minus 2a that means minus 2 okay so it's minus 2 and minus b is minus 1 okay plus c equals to 0 so minus minus plus so it is minus 2 plus 1 that's minus 1 okay minus 1 plus c is equal to 0 that gives c is equal to 1 so let's substitute that back so we get what from this relation m is equal to some constant times f raised to what 1 v raised to minus 1 and t raised to 1 so which is the answer which is the answer i guess answer is option d okay so this is how we solve problems based upon dimensions and that's all for this video see you in the next video with some other concept thanks for watching